All right, um, done a little bit of work on the dyno here. Just about done sorting some stuff out. Got a couple switches for the contactors, put proper contactors in. Still using the relay, uh, circuit breaker, sorry, and I have a fuse. It's a lower voltage fuse, but right now I'm only running 104 volts, 105 volts input. Um, got a little bit of tidying up with the wires to do. Um, got some switches, a little bit of plexiglass here for a bit of protection. I'm gonna put some on the sides here right away as well. I've been able to run 200 amps load on the regen side. So basically that controller works regen on this motor on the front here. The back has the other motor that that controller runs. That's the drive motor. So this is the input power to the drive motor. You're gonna see the power there displayed. That's the regen power. So you're gonna see this to be a lower number than this one. Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can do a run with 200 amps load phase amps. And uh, we'll just do a short run. I got a screen capturing um, program that should work here. So we'll start recording. What I like to do is get it up to get it spinning a bit and then uh, add the load once we're going. Hopefully this works okay. So that's pretty cool. We can go in here and we can stop that so we can have a look at it. And uh, it's pretty neat. We can actually um, change that and we can zoom in and out and have a look at this. You can um, change this one and change this one. You can zoom in and out this way as well. Let you see a little bit of stuff there. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty exciting doing that. I've been slowly working out a few bugs with multiple things, um, displays, getting everything to work correctly. I want to sort it all out at lower voltage and uh, finish adding all the safety features I need to add to it. But as you can see there, we had somewhere around um, 15 kilowatts input and uh, pretty smooth battery current on the input. And then we're hitting somewhere around 100 amps regen on the battery current on the output. It kind of wavered a little bit there. Um, something that not everybody understands, make it simple. Th these are hooked to the same battery. So that one pulls power out of the battery, but this one puts it back in. So the only thing that goes away out of the battery, the only like the only reason your battery discharge is because you're, of your losses. So as you saw, it was somewhere around 15 kilowatts on the input and 10 kilowatts on the output. Um, you know, basically that's five kilowatts of losses coming out of the battery. So it's not as hard of a load on the battery as it seems. Down the road, I might end up having to add um, maybe a battery in parallel or make sure the battery's warm or even put an extra capacitor or something on there to smooth it out. But I think I'll probably hook a scope up at some point and have a look at that too. I think the, the um, <clears throat> voltage is not too bad. I think it's pretty stable at the, at the, at the caps on the... Um, controllers but it's pretty neat to see it's up and running um we're definitely you know a tenth of the power of what we plan to run with this thing something like that so realistically this thing's going to be pretty awesome when it's done it's nice to see this this dyno working and it sounds pretty smooth with the real load on it um one of the next things to do is actually to increase the um voltage once i got a little bit of the safe and then run the same current again what i'm going to try and do before that though is try and get all the way up to the full current that i want to run at 100 volts just to make sure everything's safe another thing i have to do actually is add the cooling these are um liquid cooled heat plates or uh cold plates you would call them so essentially <clears throat> the back here has little coolant ports that'll hook up and the motors are liquid cooled as well. So uh, what I'm gonna, what I'm hoping to do, I got some motorcycle radiators I've hoarded essentially, but what I'm hoping to do is find maybe two radiators um, and put them on the back of this thing, facing sideways or something, or even on another external stand that just, you know, comes with it or something. I'll, I'll design something for that so that it works pretty good. But so far I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I think we're going to see some pretty big stuff come out of this within the next few weeks here. Shouldn't have ended the video so early. Um, there's a couple neat things we can actually look at. We can go through some of these and it graphed out 
the temperatures of a few things. So like your MOSFET, um, different MOSFET temperatures, they're all right there, I believe. And then motor temperature, it even shows it gaining right there. Um, pretty cool, pretty neat to see. And not only that, you can kind of look at the temperatures on this one, um, which is your drive motor climbing up to around a little higher than the than the oh, than the regen motor, which it makes sense because um, the regen side doesn't have as much power because you lose some through the input inverter and you lose some through the input motor, and then what's left is going to the output motor, the the load motor, and uh, and then the output or the load controller has to try and regen that back so it, it has a little less power to deal with so it doesn't heat up quite as fast and that's like I said without liquid cooling if I had liquid cooling set up you would still see this climb because there'd be a, a, a temperature delta where you have to get this to a certain temperature before the liquid cooling can even do anything but I have a surprise coming um, a patreon has sent me a really cool device that I'm going to be able to cool this even more with. I'll be getting that up and running hopefully in the next couple months as well. Anyways, um, need to need to check this stuff out. You can see the RPM, how it climbed. Basically, this is where I got a spin in and I put my load on, bang, it dropped down and then I give it full throttle, comes back up. And then it, it does have a little bit of a um, oscillation there where I was trying to keep the... Um, between it was a, basically the two different currents and everything. I think basically if you look at current here, you can this one right here. You can see the current on the output motor um, hit 100 amps right at this point where this climbed all the way up, and then then it come back down a bit. <clears throat> Pretty neat stuff though. I can't I can't wait to figure out how I'm gonna get this to to run. I played with some. Um, current sweep or RPMs and current sweeps earlier today. Um, they work a little bit. I wasn't, I have to figure out how I want to get them set up correctly. There's a bit of stuff going on with them. I think ideally an RPM sweep would be um, perfect um, if we can get it set up. But what I found was when it jumps from one step to the next, there's a spike in current every time it jumps up so i'd like to smooth that out somehow if it could have a little bit of a a ramp or something if i had to ramp it up instead of going instant trying to instantly achieve that rpm that would probably help a lot anyways um that's a update video for now